of what we call public opinion was just a manufactured narrative that makes it easier to convince people that if their views are different, then there's something wrong with that or there's something wrong with them. Spending is a tax. As soon as the government spends money, eventually it's a tax. Sometimes we put a direct tax on the people. Sometimes we borrow the money. And sometimes we print the money. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth. The Patrick Riggins Show. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Higher and higher. Hey, that's this show. It's uh, climbing higher and higher in the ratings. Confounding all those people who say a weekend show can't pull an audience. <laughs> and it's really all thanks to all the listeners who tune in every week, whether it's over the air, over the Internet, or listening during the week. You're the ones making this show successful. You're the ones making this show the anomaly that people are trying to figure out. Hey, is it conservative? Is it liberal? Nope, it's American. Here we're fighting for the original, the true American values of freedom and liberty. It's no wonder our Facebook page has rocketed through 10,000 people in less than five months and, frankly, is knocking on the door of 11,000. It's because people hear a show that isn't fighting for Washington. It isn't fighting for government from either side. It's fighting for the American people, us, the citizens, the ones who are making this country work and still being taxed to death. Heck, we've been taxed after we die. And helping bring you all this magnificence is the Libertarian Lighthouse Radio Network and our over-the-air broadcast station here in Knoxville, Tennessee, News Talk 98.7 WOKI. Before we get going with some of the happenings this week, I want to get to something here in the first segment. When I'm out and about during the week, I run into a lot of people, and a lot of them are fans of the show, and I get asked a lot of different questions. Now, one that occurs with some regularity is, Patrick, how can I live in a more libertarian way? What can I do in my life to see how far I'm along in my journey to mind my own business and let others mind theirs? The best way is to catch yourself when you see someone doing something that isn't harming you and isn't harming anyone else, yet you wish ill on them for doing whatever it is they're doing. Now, a good example of this is if you're driving up the interstate and someone passes you driving over the speed limit. Do you immediately hope, hey, I hope there's a cop sitting on the road up ahead that'll catch them? Do you think, boy, I hope that motorcycle cop that sits up here all the time is up here today. That would slow that car down. Or you see someone who's been pulled over for speeding and you think, ha, ah, they got caught speeding. When you catch yourself thinking that way, you need to immediately stop and think, well, who are they hurting by speeding? Where is the victim in this supposed crime? And don't give me the society thing. That's, that's BS. If we're going to say society is the victim, then society is the victim whenever anyone is on the road doing anything. There's always a chance someone in society could be hurt. S society isn't a valid victim. But Patrick, they're endangering my life by driving over the speed limit. Well, here's a news flash. Just about everyone is driving over the speed limit. <laughs> Are you going to tell me everyone is endangering your law? Y using that logic, we should pull everyone off the road and only allow people to use it one at a time. The fact of the matter is, everyone who's been driving for any amount of time has broken a speed limit law, usually multiple times a day. Now, did anyone die? So if we don't have a victim, how do we have a crime? Speed limits don't make driving safer. Just look at how people drive out there on the roads. There's plenty of idiots who drive at or under the speed limit who can't keep it in their own lane. In a free society... Until there's an accident where we have a victim, how can you have a crime? This is what you need to be thinking about when you find yourself hoping someone gets a speeding ticket because they passed you on the road. You see how this works? You don't want people telling you how fast to drive. 
as I already mentioned, every driver has broken a, a speed limit. Every one. Every driver. But if you're thinking it's okay when you do it, but not when others do, then you're being a hypocrite. Your little libertarian voice should be screaming in your head at that point. And by libertarian, I mean someone who believes in the original American values of freedom and liberty. Those values that made this country great. Those values that are under attack by our own government. And that's just one way to tell if you're a government solutions, government-centric person, or if you're an original American values person, a freedom and liberty-loving person. If you're going to love your freedom and liberty, then you're going to have to love it when others practice it as well. If that person that speeding is coming up on your back bumper and you're sitting in the left lane because, hey, they don't need to be driving that fast anyway, well, you've got some work to do. You're a controlling person. You want to control this other person's actions even when they aren't hurting anyone else. But not hurting anyone else isn't good enough. You don't agree with their actions, so they need to drive like you think they should. You're a government-centric person. That's how government-centric people think. You can tell me you love freedom and liberty, but your actions tell me how you really feel. You love freedom and liberty for you, but not for everyone else. You'd make an excellent government politician, or even better, a government bureaucrat. Our government is, is chock full of people wanting to tell others how to live. Now, if this is hitting a little too close to home, then good. You probably have some thinking to do about the principles you say you hold and the ones you actually do. Do you think people can make decisions for themselves, or do you think they need to have behavior imposed upon them? This is what I've been talking about in the last month or so when I've been saying this is government against the people. And by government, I mean people in government and people who back the government. People who want governmental control of everything and everyone in this country. You know, government should be telling us what to do. Government should be regulating everything. Government should be approving everything. If that's your belief, then you're a government person. A whole lot of people in this country, both liberals and conservatives, they think of themselves as freedom-loving Americans, but they really aren't. They love freedom for what they want, but they don't want others to have that same unlimited freedom if it involves something they disagree with. They want you to have just as much freedom as they have, but no more. They voluntarily limit their freedom in certain areas of their lives. Well, we all do. We don't all do drugs. We don't all engage in prostitution. But we should be all free to do so if we wish. Those are vices. And just like any other vices, some are harmful and some are not. But if you aren't infringing on the rights of another person, then you should be free to engage in them. Now, if you don't believe in that, if you don't believe in true American freedom and liberty, then basically you're a lab rat. You want someone else setting the boundaries. You don't trust yourself to do what's best for your life. And since you don't trust yourself to make the correct decisions, you don't trust others to do so either. And don't give me that tired old argument that some people simply can't make decisions for themselves. I've covered that before on this show. In a nutshell, we have a system for that. A judge can assign someone who is truly unable to make decisions for themselves. He can assign them a guardian. But for the rest of us, we don't need one. We can handle things on our own. Now, we may make some bad decisions. We may make some good decisions. Either way, as human beings, we have the right to do that. You know, bringing this argument real quickly into today's headlines, you people that are for Obamacare, you realize that eventually you'll be subjected to this kind of control. If you're doing things like if you're doing drugs or if you're getting speeding tickets, if you're renting mountain climbing equipment, equipment the government's going to know it. The NSA can draw up a pretty good profile on you as a person based on your buying habits and your emails and the websites you visit. And now with the government and medical care, they can check your medical records to see what you've been to the doctor about and what they found out through their examinations. If you're doing things that the government doesn't approve of, do you think they're going to pay for your medical care? Don't you think you'll be charged more because 
you're taking more risk with your life, that you have more risk factors in your insurance. The government already heavily taxes products that it thinks you shouldn't be buying. Just look at tobacco. If the government is already taxing products that are risky, how hard is it going to be for it to make the argument of taxing you more personally through your health insurance for what it determines as risky behavior? The chances of you costing more in medical care are higher, therefore you have to pay more for your insurance. You used to, the government didn't know what you were up to. Heck, for the most part, your insurance company really didn't know. But now everyone is going to know. They're going to know if you fly a lot. They're going to know if you mountain climb. They're going to know if you get a lot of traffic tickets. They're going to know everything about you and don't think they won't factor that into the equation on your medical care. After all, it's only fair, right? Hey, we're, we're up on the first break here on the Patrick Riggins Show this week. When we return, oh, we'll get into the aftermath of this whole government shutdown and what it really means for you, the American citizen, when we come back here on the Patrick Riggins Show. Sure. 